And it all starts with a dream. A twisting, moving sight of a past. Uh, a meeting between one swordsman and a woman. And the two of them talking with each other and beginning to understand their own purposes. It, it is a memory that, at the time, the swordsman didn't particularly think would ever amount to much. It was just some stranger on the road, some complete weirdo. He never thought that it would be, well, his wife down the line. And despite everything, however, it was quite an interesting meeting. On a field of flowers. Where they hey! For hey! <coughs> <coughs> and that memory is broken apart instantly. <laughs> Yo! Swordsman! Yo! Hey! Dude! And then, kind of broken oh. from his memory, he looks. Doze out there for a second? Well, good morning! How you feeling? Oh, and should I call you Owen now? Oh, what a nice name! Sounds like home to me! The jellyfish swordsman brings his attention fully forward at the squealing man, who is currently in the process of wrenching a mask off of one of these creatures on the floor. Seeing one of them brings the swordsman back to reality. He's in the Forbidden Forest yet again, but this time with some unsavory company. I'd prefer if you never referred to me by my first name. Just swordsman or karage if you must. The man in front of him is Bruce Arredondo, also known as the Fool's Gold Gunner, a foul mercenary <laughs> from his old home. The only ounce of good in him exists in how good his aim is. He rips a mask <laughs> off the strange being beneath him, after the spectral black body of the entity seems to fade into a ghostly mist, the foxtail-shaped hair on its head slipping into the void of the mask along with its clothes. And in its place is... a broken umbrella! <laughs> <laughs> Tell me they could be umbrellas too. <laughs> oh god! A voice rings out nearby him. However, enough. Jeez. If you refuse to let me focus and at least respect the spirits, so long as you don't take those masks off, they should be able to heal just fine by the time we leave. There's no need to take their lives when their healing process is too slow to let them hinder us again. Isn't that right, swordsman? The voice comes from the small, old man seated at the hands of the statue. He is the Oragashi, the Paper Prince. Despite his dour choice of clothing and sinister choice of weapons, he is undoubtedly the most bearable of the bunch. <laughs> Even now, his hands turn and twist, guiding his strange puppets far into the forest with strange, invisible magics. Ah, fuck off, fuddy-duddy! I'm not being paid to respect spirits, or you for that matter! <laughs> uh, he stops for a moment. And Bruce takes the broken umbrella, waggles it around in his hands for a moment, and then just chucks it off somewhere in the woods. And then, uh, from there, the swordsman kind of turns over to him. You should respect your elder, especially when it's his power that's keeping us safe right now. Be quiet and let him focus. Eh! This little paper gimmick ain't worth shit besides a distraction. Blessedly, the man seems to shut up around this point, and the swordsman takes a silent moment to pay respects for the yokai beneath him. The magic that Im and Jagra granted him was a violent one that manifested itself into every slice the swordsman made. It easily turned a blow that was only supposed to disable this yokai into a fatal one. Wow. Never thought I'd see a swordsman give a shit about a spirit. Huh. You're in my respect, swordsman. He turns around at the other voice, yet another entity. This one seeming to just appear, sitting on the body. He could have sworn that this, this this person was not sitting there just a moment ago, but they are familiar. She would be an unsettling sight if it were not for her height. Only about four feet tall, the swordsman towers over her, and yet despite that, she carries around a Tetsubo that even the swordsman would falter to carry. I'm nothing special in that regard. There are plenty of good-hearted swords better than me amongst the Raoji. <coughs> <laughs> Oh, swordsman, I've lived for centuries, and I've yet to meet any of those good-hearted swords of yours till today. Take it from me, you're unique. That's probably what drew little Setsu Bean to you. Please, don't apply meaning where there isn't any. <clears throat> the only reason I'm here is to break that barrier, and you know it. Eh, that's your job, but if we only needed that, she could have just killed you and took the swords. But fine, I won't pretend to know why she picked you. What's more interesting to me is that... Hey, 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 no, she put that down, put that... And... Suddenly, from beneath her, 
another entity is seeming to pick up, grabbing this strange body, and as their own form seems to just kind of form out all, all but suddenly. A larger Oni, Whoa. much taller, <laughs> bright blue appears. <laughs> Lifting up one of the yokai spirits, her jaw unhinges for a moment, and the skin on her cheeks peels away to allow for the full torso to fit inside. She chomps down and begins to chew on the thing. Atsuka's outbursts only reaching her ears moments after the first bite as the thing just disappears under her mouth. I said respect the spirits, damn it! The mercenary belches out another of his uh, iconic hyena laughs, whereas Atsuka can only sigh. What? I'm just eating. Those things are putrid. How can you even enjoy that? Atsuka hops up the body and just kind of approaches the larger one. Oh, dear battle sister, it's not the taste, but the texture that enraptures me so. The consistency. It's unlike anything I've ever eaten. It, It's like... A squishy pillow! I don't care what it's like, spit it out! You can feast on those guards at the gate on our way out. At least they have some flavor to them. But the way these things ride, they can't be healthy. Chuki frowns. Her deliberation gives the legs enough time to disintegrate into the ghostly smoke. Robbed of her meal, she sulks. Hey Chi, did you find anyone? She nods her head. Nobody. The foxes have scurried back into the woods. Eh, gotcha. In that case, you come and come out now, Ink Spot. And upon that cue, another individual drops out. The six of their company. And as he does, upon her ushering command, it drops from the tree right next to Chuki. Simply sitting in wait, ready to strike at an approaching threat, the unresting liquid form just seems to reshape right there. And as it does, it stands again strong and vigilant. Its body is a mass of cursed ink to the very same kind that flows within the jellyfish swordsman's veins at this very moment. It's silent, watchful, and completely stoic. The atmosphere of this place seems to be choked up by its presence. The world itself seems to slip into this thing like a black hole. F fucking hell, I hate that thing! And feel blessed it is on our side, Arredondo. <laughs> Whatever, I'm not afraid of it, I just hate it. As long as the money pays well, I'd rub shoulders with any kind of abomination. They call me Loyalty Bruce back in Winrose. <laughs> Suddenly, this kind of seems to irritate the larger Oni as she starts moving to approach. Um, brushing past the swordsman and she just kind of seems to get very, very close up to this thing. You should show some respect. Ink's blood is our lady's fairest drops of blood. To call him an abomination is to profane her name. I will end your life if you do it again. Oh, what the hell are you all yelling about? Um, suddenly, from down south, another figure approaches. The swordsman, kind of hearing him, step from behind. The final of their company. The man known as Mr. Grey. And, despite every one of their entourage, all the companions, be they abomination, villain, or demon, Mr. Grey is still the one that unsettles the jellyfish swordsman the most. As he steps up, he pierces through with fierce words as all of the attention are snapped to him. What's the matter? Th this worm, he insults him in Jagra. Uh, Atsuka seems to kind of approach. Th that's enough. Come on. It's fine. We'll get him back later. Mr. Grey eyes the two only with passive, disdainful interest before turning back to address the main group. All right, listen up. I've checked in with all the defense line and what what's left of it, at least. The primary entrance to the forest has been broken through, and the other entrances are folding as well. I've ordered all the soldiers to regroup and hold at the northern exit, but Psycho trained them decently enough. I doubt they'll hold out much longer, however. Origashi, how are things on your end? Hmm. Jigoku Oji is currently engaged with the head of the enemy, and the other one is hunting. Fine, good. Start bringing the other back to the primary entrance. Meanwhile, the rest of you back up. We're gonna get out of here. Swordsman, you know the way, right? The swordsman, who has been through these woods before, remembers the path ahead. They're only about halfway there, and so long as distractions can be kept off of them, it shouldn't be too much longer. Yeah. Alright, good. Let's move out. We don't have time to wait. Oh, he's a slave driver, that guy. Hey! Lady! Wanna give me a hand with these boxes? Hmm. She kind of wordlessly steps closer. As she moves in, it looks like she's just, like, decided, yeah, I'm just gonna stomp on you now. You're gonna die. 
Um, and Bruce, kind of seeing that malice in her eyes, kind of steps back a bit. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant malice in her eye. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but she just kind of seems to go past, picking up two of the boxes on the floor and putting them on her arms. Bruce seems to be satisfied with that as she walks off, and he just kind of seems to go as well. Hey, hey, hang on, aren't you going to take that last box? Nah, too heavy, don't need it, let's go! The entourage just kind of seems to move off. Uh, Jellyfish Swords, whenever, takes the time to go and help the old man off of the statue. Uh, thank you, Swordsman. <laughs> I very much appreciate that. Mm. He then turns around and faces Grey. Hey, I don't mean to question your judgment, Mr. Grey. However, I do have a question. Eh, yeah, what is it? As the entourage moves off, the Swordsman uh, talks to Mr. Grey one-on-one -on -one for just a moment. Are you sure that not bringing back the other puppet would be best? I mean, if it's something that dangerous, it should help us get even closer. Um, Mr. Gray kind of waits for a second, and then kind of seems to stare. There's something hidden behind his eye, but he hides it well. He simply gives Jellyfish Swordsman one answer. That would be nice, however we can't afford that. After all, the reinforcements have just arrived. Standing in front of you, uh, the lines of rebel forces and Raoji's own men seem to have fallen upon each other. As you arrive, the battle has already ended, and in your place, here, only silence. Some guns still smoking, the path ahead of you, the gate to the mystic forest, well open. And all you have to do is take a step, for inside lies your next enemy, the next arm, though this one is a bit more personal. Show as you head the line, you stare forward and you gaze at the gate, and you recall, you recall hearing about this. You remember, you remember who it is you're after, your father. You remember back to when you were first told of this. So, uh... Shows like sitting. Shows sitting on the step. She has one of these like rotund creatures, sort of between, like braced across her lap between her hands, and she's rolling them back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. You hear who our next target is? Yeah. Um. You doing okay, kid? Looks down at the cat. Rolls it again. <laughs> 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 Everyone recoils. <laughs> I... I think I am, actually. I thought I'd feel something. Like, excitement or... Being upset. Anger. Confusion. Um... I don't feel much of anything, honestly. Rolls the cat again. So, um... Should we go? Well... Yeah, I guess, um, how much of a head start does he have? Do we know where he's going, precisely? Yeah, um, he's headed to the Forbidden Woods. Um, what he's doing there, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, he's got a few days head start. Um, we don't know exactly when he vanished, but it was at least a little time ago. The army's been dispatched... We're supposed to catch up, um, do whatever we can to make the situation swing in our favor. Hmm. Okay, well, if we're gonna catch up, we certainly can't use pur purebred horses, so... <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> All right. Show show nods along at the sage like wisdom, something commonly <laughs> accepted in the capital. <laughs> she uh she looks over and then like actually perks up. Um oh, uh you guys know motions with that at the temple swordsman. Hmm. Oh yeah, hey. Um I'm a bit, I'm not going with you, by the way. That That's just right out the gate. I'm kind of stuck here, but I do sympathize. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Junya's hands are pressed together, the tips of his fingers just under his chin, and he his face is angled slightly downward as he stares off into space. Uh... I... had occasion to meet your father but once. But he seemed to me to be a thoughtful and considerate man, uh, entirely deserving of his reputation both as a fierce warrior and as a man of great integrity. Damn straight he is. <laughs> Do... What's going on, Sho? Do you know? It's so difficult for me to fathom this. I, um... I mean, I gave it whatever thought I could. Um, I don't think it's something that I can find out just by scratching my head about it. Um, <laughs> I, I, I could think of like a few dozen reasons why, but I don't know. None of them, none of them like, like feel right, you know? Um, I, I don't know why he'd do this. Uh. <sighs> it is deeply distressing coming so soon on the heels of... of Yuko. I am led to wonder how many of these arms have motives that seem almost to justify their heinous end. He, uh, he <sighs> draws out Yuko's katana, which he's been carrying along since they defeated her. <sighs> <sighs> I mean, knowing your father, he's a pretty honorable... No, he's not pretty honorable. He is honorable. If anything, they probably forced his hand, if I had to guess. Hmm. Maybe. Uh, she... she rolls the cat one more time. Uh, I... I also don't feel like he's the type of person that blackmail would necessarily work on. Um... I don't know what they said to him, but it's probably pretty damn convincing. Well, take into consideration, it might not just be blackmail, it might... It might not even be a threat to him. It could be a threat to you or your mom. Hmm. That could push him, maybe. Junia thinks to... <laughs> Ayano and Tento Mushi and the relative levels of how fear-inducing <laughs> each of them are, and sort of smirks slightly. Hmm, they're welcome to try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and almost directly vocalizing Junia's thought, uh, Shoja shrugs, they're welcome to try. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to be able to do what we need to do? Looks down at her, looks down at the cat, which is hiding her sword somewhere behind its giant boulder-like body. <laughs> <sighs> normally I'd say, normally I'd say no, um, like, this is the part where this is supposed to be too much for me, right? Like, a anyone would struggle fighting their family, but, um, I think I'll be fine. Mm. She stands up and puts the cat down. <sighs> Which, yeah, that's weird in itself. It may be, but meager insight I can provide. He, uh, he sort of examines the blade of, of the katana and weighs it in his hands. But I will do my best to find my own answers to why... To why such a thing could possibly come to pass, perhaps wielding a fallen warrior's blade against another will give me the answer that I seek. Show nods. Yeah, um, that, you're, <laughs> you'd kind of sound like my dad a little bit. It's all about, you know, being a sword, like, using it as an extension of your body and, like, as a tool to de Find yourself. Junior puts a hand on Sho's shoulder, takes out his handkerchief. <laughs> Why Sho? <laughs> I do believe that's the kindest thing you've ever said to me. 
Oh, boy. <laughs> so, so, like, sh- she looks at Junior and then, like, looks past him t- for for help. Like, what did I do? <laughs> Bruno just puts his hands up and shrugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, um, I, yeah, that, <laughs> she takes a step backwards. <laughs> she is, she is shockingly, um, sh- she's shockingly more put off by this than the news somehow. <laughs> That's, uh, more or less how I was raised, I guess. Do your best to be a sword, be a, sort of, be an extension of that blade, um. I, I sort of tried my best to live that way. If my dad's doing that again, um, I don't know if I'm proud of him or upset. Well, you can always ask him. <sighs> yeah. Guess so. Hmm. Well, let us not tarry here. <laughs> For while dark works may be Something we must all confront. <laughs> we will still have a rare opportunity to set foot in the Forbidden Woods. A chance afforded to few mortals, I think you will find. I am told that it is a place of great beauty. <laughs> great. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, show, show nods. Yeah, that, that does sound nice. We'll, we'll ask him what's up when we get there. <laughs> sort of brushes all the cat fur off. I don't know why. I, th- I guess my head's foggy. It's, it's been real foggy lately, ever since Yuko. Um, I don't know. Feels like I'm starting to get tired of looking at for answers outside myself, and I want to find something in in here. She pokes the side of her head; it squishes. <laughs> mm. Well, I suppose our best course of action is to hit the road as soon as possible. They got a hell of a head start. The temple swordsman uh, takes the cat off his head and gently <laughs> puts it back down on the floor with a very serious expression on his head. Um, <laughs> and uh, he kind of turns over to show. Um, <clears throat> if it wouldn't be too much trouble, I... Uh, you could, could you ask him a question for me? If, if it's at all possible. I have no idea what his state would be, but I'm very curious of knowing. But with Psycho, I... I'm very curious, similar to Junior, I imagine. I'm rather curious what makes uh, men of honor and integrity turn so easily. She she nods. Ask him where his honor lies. I'd like to know. Okay. Can do. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> waves and starts walking away. <laughs> he waves back at you. Buru, like, leans over. So, like, how much you tell him about the psycho situation? Just out of curiosity. 100% <laughs> all of it. <laughs> hmm. I think our 100%s are very different. <laughs> Everything what are you talking I- about? We were all there. <laughs> yeah. I told him everything in excruciating detail. Normally, I would have lied or made something up. I don't know. But that's that's someone that I'm going to beat in a sword duel someday. I want to at least, like, try to be honest and honorable. Give that a shot for once. I think you're pretty honorable. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> she take looks... it from me. Take it from me. You're pretty honorable. <laughs> yeah, take, take it from him. <laughs> Her face kind of screws up to the side like, I don't know. Okay, though. <laughs> But, um, also, if when we get there, you start feeling a little overwhelmed, just know we got your back. Okay? She smiles. That, uh, yeah, that helps. Um, like I said, my mind is shockingly... It's foggy, but I... I feel like I'll be fine. Hmm. Hmm. You don't always got to be tough. It's okay to rely on others. I kind of wish I could in a situation like this. Hmm. Like I had the capacity to. It's not a problem of 
It's not a problem of me covering something up, I'm just... I feel like there should be a weak spot here and there just... isn't. She keeps walking. Hmm. Well, all the easier then. <laughs> Nods. <laughs> good, th good thing you're you, otherwise this would have been a messy, awkward situation. <laughs> Uh, that's a good way to look at it. <laughs> she says, nodding and walking down the stairs. <laughs> you begin heading down the stairs, and as you do so, and as you took those steps out, your mind returns back to the forest entrance where you now stand. And despite all of the travel, despite everything, your resolve is unshaken. You will enter this forest, and you will learn the reasons for why your father rebelled and did this. However, that will not stop you. If your father does seek destruction on this scale, then, well, that's just something you'll have to deal with. It'll be a part of your job now, at least. Oh, boy. Wow, they, uh, they really tore through these guys. What a mess. Yeah. I can't believe that they all managed to kill each other like this. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, actually, when you look, you notice that it seems as though the, uh, it was, at the very top, they had cannonades installed and rifles up there, and it seems that it was more of a attempt to push. The ones who died up front most likely died, uh, and then were pushed up upon. Oh. It looks more like a castle storming than it does a, uh, everyone going and clashing together in close range. Gotcha. <laughs> you can recognize that by how the blood has spilled. Uh, multiple <sighs> shots yeah, yeah. ringing out back. Mm. Hmm. Senseless and ugly. We must put a stop to this. I give Psycho's boys more credit than I initially did, I guess. They put up a good fight. You move past this strangely positioned, uh, wall, like, this kind of, like, shield wall that seems just kind of been moved and jammed up right up to these spikes. And as you go, you notice that a path has been cleared. One of these, uh, barriers has been blocked and destroyed. And in front of you, you see the entrance path, and you even start to see the light glow, the bluish-purplish glowing dome that almost seems to form around this, um, entire forest emerging from the walls. Inside, this keeps the biomes and locations of the forest intact, preserving a thousand species of trees and animals and spirits all within which its own reach. The largest forest in Raoji. You all begin taking steps inside, and as you go, the forest unfolds around you. 